Welcome back to 33-year-old Boomer, ranting in the woods. Generative AI will cook your coding skills. Let's talk about it. I get it, AI is tempting. When you're trying to build something and you're stuck, it's really tempting to type in chatjeopardy.com and go, hey, here's, here's my code, fix it for me, please fix it for me. Even the people who are aware of this danger and who actively avoid it are still at risk of doing this. I honestly don't understand the logic. I don't understand why you would build a black box. Because if you don't understand what the code is doing, that is precisely what is happening. You are building a system that you do not understand. Isn't it a bit crazy that most people would happily run code on their machine? Code that they do not understand? You do get that running random code from an LLM isn't that different from just running some random executable off the internet, right? If you don't understand what the code is doing, how can you know that you're safe? How can you know that your, your data, your sensitive data on your machine is safe? And before you say, well, no, no, these chats, these chatbots are safe. No, they're not. They're trained. They're trained on data from the internet. They trade on so much data that it's impossible for these companies to ever possibly even begin to curate it. It would be so easy for an attacker to train the LLM to spit out malicious code under certain contexts, especially for use cases that aren't that common. It can go on a blog, it can go on Reddit, and they can say, hey, if you're trying to do X, if you're trying to access this API, just run this code and it will work. And then the code is just, it's literally malicious code. That is complete insanity. Not to mention the fact that you are not learning anything. When you use an AI to write code, you are not learning anything. You might think that you're learning something. You might feel like you're learning something. But consider this. If you watched a bunch of athletes perform amazing feats, are you getting better at doing those things? If you watch Olympic runners run, are you getting better at running? If you watch professional dancers dance, are you getting better at dancing? Because I'm pretty sure you're not, right? There is some aspect of human learning that involves mimicking. You watch the video on YouTube, the guy writes hello world and you write hello world. That's how you learn, by mimicking. Monkey see, monkey do. If you just watch a six hour video on coding, unless you're already very familiar with the topic, you won't learn anything. You have to put your hands on your grimy, dirty keyboard covered in Dorito dust. I know, don't worry, I know. And you have to start typing. And if you use an LLM and you go, give me code, it gives you code, you copy it into VS Code, it doesn't work, you paste it back, fix it, fix it, fix it. It tries to explain to you how the code works, you go, I don't care, just give me the code, fix it. <laughs> oh baby, you are so cooked, you have no idea. You see, pain is good. Pain is what will teach you. You know that feeling when you come across a problem with the code and you can't quite understand what the issue is? That feeling of resistance, of pain, of frustration? 
That is the precursor to the learning moment. That is the point where you have to struggle and you get to build brain muscles. And instead of doing that, you go to Chad Jeopardy and you go, Oh, can you, can you please fix this for me, please? Oh, I don't want to use my brain. That's you right there. That's what you sound like. <laughs> and look, I get it. I've done it too. I'm not, I'm not innocent of this. But when I did it, I realized, oh no, what am I doing? This is horrifying. I need to stop. Let me give you an example. Once I realized that anything even resembling vibe coding was a problem, I decided that, hey, I have this curiosity. I have this, this question. I have this question that I want to answer to myself. And that is, if I had to build a text compression algorithm, how would I do that? And so on purpose, I didn't look up anything about compression algorithms. Instead, I came up with a plan. I opened Vim, classic, I know, GigaChat, I know. And I typed the logic. I thought, okay, how will this, if I had to hand roll this algorithm, how would I build this? What is the logic that would power this program? And so I thought, okay, well, Compression probably has something to do with re with replacing larger text with smaller text. Also, it's snowing. I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see the snow behind me? It's tiny flakes. I thought, okay, I need to replace big text with small text. And then this needs to be a known quantity because when I decompress it later, the original text needs to match with the new text. Or, or the other way around, really. And once I figured out the logic, the coding was the easy bit. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna learn Ruby. And this is a fantastic opportunity to do so. And so I rewrote the logic into pseudocode. We do this, we use regex here, we open the file, we take out the contents, we train it like this, right? It's just pseudocode. And then I just learned Ruby in the process. So I would have documentation open explaining how uh, the various syntax of Ruby. Sometimes I would ask Chad Jippity, hey, what is the syntax for this in Ruby? Notice that I wouldn't ask it, hey, solve my problem for me. I would say, hey, what's the syntax for this? How do I do this in Ruby? How do I open a file in Ruby? How do you do a for loop in Ruby? That kind of stuff. And very, very quickly, I ended up with Ruka, which if you want to check out the code, it's on my GitHub. And once I wrote it, I thought, hey, let me, let me document this entire, let me autistically write three to 4,000 words of documentation because I want to prove to myself and to any potential employers that could be watching or reading that I know how this works, even though I just built it myself. And so I went through each function, each block of code, sometimes each line of code, and I wrote extensive documentation explaining how every step of the program worked. And the reason why I could do this is because I found the program and the concept to be interesting. When something is interesting, you have no problem writing three to 4,000 words of documentation. And you get to prove to yourself that you truly understand how this works. And you get to cement how this works in your brain to the point where seven months later, I could look, I, like right now, I could list exactly how this program works. If I read for the source code, I would just know how everything worked. And I would know why I put it there. Because I understand the project. And that is something that you will never ever achieve with an LLM. So let's say that you want to build a project. How would you go about it in order to make sure that you maximize 
the amount of learning. First off, figure out a problem in your life, something that you could automate or some concept that you're interested in. Then figure out a version of the solution that exists just outside of your current capability. It can't be within it, because then what's the point? And it can't be too far outside of it, because that could get demotivating. Pick something that feels like it's just outside of your current ability. Then I want you to use your big brain and I want you to come up with the logic behind this program. Step by step, how would this program run? Does it involve manipulating data? Okay, well, you probably have to open a file at some point. Cool, so step one, open a file. How do you access this file? Is the path hard-coded? Is the path inferred in context? Perhaps you have to use arguments in order to pass this path in the command line when you run the program. These, whichever one it is, that will inform how the program is going to start. What's the first thing that it will do? Does it have a hard-coded path? Am I going to have to figure out logic to how to infer which file that is? Or am I going to use arguments to figure out what the path is? Okay, so we have the data. How do we process it? How do we pass it, right? Let's say you have to go for a bunch of text. How do you extract the information? How does your programming language work? Are you going to extract a line by line? Are you going to uh, pull in the whole file and then go for it line by line? Are you going to use regex? Are you going to use some other form of logic to pass this text? How is it going to work? You have to decide this before you write a single line of code. And so by doing this very quickly, you will have the bones of a working piece of software. The next step is writing the pseudocode. You have to go through your logic, which is likely very verbose, and you have to break it down into some sort of pseudocode. If this, then that, loop through this. Like you can use human language. You don't have to use any particular programming language syntax. And once you've done this, now comes the real painful part, if you're learning. The painful but fun part, which is writing the actual code. And so you are allowed to look things up. However, I would recommend that you do this in the following order. The first step is using your head. What might the syntax be for this? It could be wrong. That's fine. You're allowed to be incorrect. But I want you to try and guess what the syntax might look like. Do you have an if statement that requires evaluating two expressions? Do you have to use and? Do you have to use or? How do you, how do, you do and or in your language? Do you have to use... Uh, do, you, do you have to use... Not. What's the logic behind this if statement? Write it down as best you can. Step number two. Go to Google. Go to Google and say, how do I do X in Python? How do I do this in C? And try and find a solution. I know it feels pointless. I know you're thinking, why? I can just ask ChatGPT. Because the pain trains you. The pain trains you to be resilient, to have patience, to focus. And in the process, as you're reading stuff that doesn't quite apply to what you're doing, you will pick up on information, on things that you didn't even know existed. You're going to find problems with your code that you would not have found otherwise because Chad Gippery wouldn't have told you about it. And then the final step... If you've thought about it, if you've Googled it, you can then ask ChatGPT some things. Be very careful with this. It will pull you in. It's very addictive. <laughs> you can then and only then ask it questions. And when it gives you an answer, I want you to do the following. One, 
I want you to make 100% sure that you understand what the code does. Do not copy something from an LLM and just run it on your machine. Not only is it dangerous, but you're not going to learn anything. I want you to go through the code and I want you to ask it questions. Don't say, what does this function do? Say, I, okay, I think this function does this. I think that it works like this. Is this true? Is this how this works? And it will go, certainly, right? <laughs> or it will tell you, no, it actually works this way. And only once you've understood it, are you then allowed to manually type it in, into VS Code, into NeoVim, into whatever you're using. You have to do it manually because that will help you memorize the logic. If you want to get really good at running, you have to run. You can't just read about running or watch people run. You have to do it. If you want to get good at writing code, you have to write code. And copying it from ChatGPT doesn't count. Now, some of you might say, but Christian, this, all this high tech, isn't it the point of it that we should use it? Isn't it the point that high tech makes our lives easier? If you believe that to be true, I invite you to walk over to a store where they sell motorized wheelchairs. And I want you to sit down in this wheelchair and just go about your day. Just use the wheelchair to go everywhere. What was initially a choice to sit in a wheelchair will eventually not be a choice at all. You will eventually have no choice but to use the wheelchair because you can no longer walk. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.